Welcome to Swept TV Africa. Let the story begin. When talent is not enough, the story of Etim Essin. Etim Essin was one time a Nigerian footballer who could have been a world best player but lost it to youthful exuberance. Yes, before the days of JJ Okocha, there was a playmaker in the Nigerian team who was a great dribbler and was even nicknamed the African Maradona. His name, Etim Essin. Who is Etim Essin? What did he do? How special was it? And how did he lose it all? Back in the days, in 1987, the Nigerian under-20 team were in the camp around Suruleri, preparing to leave the country in a few days for the World Cup in Chile. Etim Essin was the star boy of the team, a supremely gifted player who had something extra each time he was on the pitch. A former Super Eagles striker Charles Okonkwo once said Etim Essin was one of the few players who could effortlessly make the Nigerian team of any generation. Even the late Stephen Keshi also have this to say about him. In the words of Stephen Keshi, and I quote, we had Etim Essin and relied so much on him. The team was built so much around him because he had all the skills and everything to offer. So we said, this is our Diego Maradona. In Nigeria, because he can do anything with the ball, it was like he was born with the ball. The under-20 team were under strict instructions not to leave the camp, but Etim Essing couldn't resist the law of Lagos nightlife. He broke out of camp with two other players to visit a nightclub. On their way out, armed robbers attacked them and shot Etim Essing in the leg. He was thought to have died, but luckily he was found and given early medication. It was said that the robbers sent estimating an apology letter while he was in the hospital claiming that they never recognized him, they didn't know he was the one, if not, they wouldn't have shot him. The medical team had to rush his medical process just to get him to the World Cup. A team Essin was able to make it to Chile half feet and the Nigerian team thoroughly was embarrassed as they crashed out of Chile. The team had the worst result since they debuted in 1983. Etimesin went to play in Belgium for a number of teams, most notably the Locrem and the Lesse. His lack of discipline and poor attitude made him get into trouble a number of times, which affected even his international career. He has represented Nigeria in six FIFA World Cup qualifying matches. He was left out of the team that represented Nigeria in 1994 World Cup because there was a report that he was banned by FIFA for allegedly raping a minor during his playing days with Lesa FC. Etimesin fell into trouble with his coaches and the biggest hit that dropped him was when he was accused of raping a minor in Belgium. Etimesin jumped bail in Belgium and escaped home to Nigeria and insists that he is innocent of the allegation. Etim Essin was, however, vindicated 25 years later because the child never had a trace of an African blood. The stigma never went away. His once promising career crumbled and the accusation of a crime as heinous as a rape proved too heavy for Etim to recover from. There seemed to be no way back for the stylish midfielder once fondly called the African Maradona as he was not able to play at the highest level again until he retired. It is not every time we should blame village people, village people. At times, our failure is as a result of the decision which we took or which we refused to take. 
However, a good attitude is very important to success. Without it, even the best talent can waste away. Village people, like they say, is not always behind your troubles. Your greatest enemy might be your poor attitude. Do well to like and share your opinion. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more interesting history coming from Africa.